This is where the ruthless Confederate guerrilla, Captain William Quantrell, the commander of the infamous Quantrell's Raiders, met his final demise. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm in Spencer County, Kentucky, just a little bit south of Taylorsville, and I'm very near the location where William Quantrell was mortally wounded and captured. And by the way, if you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos. I've got a special guest with me today. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Davis Downs. And Mr. Downs, what is your connection, uh, what is your interest with uh, Captain Quantrill in this story? Well, I'm a lifelong resident of Spencer County, Kentucky, and the historical marker that was dedicated in uh, 1957 and I was in the seventh grade and had written a book report on Quantra because he was killed uh, or shot a mile and a half from where I, my current residence. Wow. So I, uh, I was asked to participate in the dedication along with Joe Creason who was a writer for the Louisville Cure Journal uh, and at the dedication when the sign was put at Wakefield, Kentucky. Then in Wakefield, yeah, you, you were just a little community little MapDoc community is south of Taylorsville there. Right, and it was, in, it, during the Civil War, it was uh, a place uh, that contained a lot of uh, Southern sympathizers. And as a result of that, uh, that's one of the reasons that Quantrill and his men had come in from uh, Missouri and located uh, here in this area. They were conducting raids around and, and getting horses. They'd come in and got uh, better horses. But they knew they, that Quantrill and his men would probably have a safe haven uh, in, in this area because uh, they had relatives here and, and uh, once again were Southern sympathizers. Really cool, really cool. So, William Quantrill, who, who is that guy? What, what, tell me a little bit about him. Uh, he, was, he was born in, uh, on July the 31st of 1837 in Canal Dover, now simply Dover, Ohio. Yeah, it used to be called Canal Dover, now it's just Dover, Ohio, which is a little bit east of Columbus, a little bit north of that. And his father was the principal at the high school that William graduated when he was 16 years old. So he, he was a high school graduate, but he kind of bounced around. He had a little bit of a young, or a little bit of a rough uh, young, younger years, didn't he? He bounced around and at various jobs and even had, uh, for a while, was a uh, teacher. Yeah, so he taught school in a couple different states, I think, from Kansas to Illinois, Indiana, I think, maybe even Kentucky for a bit. I, I believe that's correct. So, you know, he's known for his Confederate service, but uh, he didn't start out that way, did he? No, uh, he didn't. At one time, he supported the abolitionist movement, but as uh, time went by around 1860, that all changed. So wow, he started out as an abolitionist, but uh, then things changed pretty quick. And then wound up riding with a group that was capturing uh, slaves. Wow, yeah, for, uh, escaped slaves. Escaped slaves and uh, turned them back to their owners, and they were getting, of course, uh, remunerated for that. Yeah, get a bounty for that, and I think that, uh, um, you know, when you fall on hard times, you have to do what you can to uh, make the money that uh, you can. That's so, right. so it's funny how abolitionist turns to a fugitive slave catcher. That's correct. And in 1861, he ended up in Texas, where he joined up with Joel B. Mays, who was half Cherokee and half Scots-Irish. And when he teamed up with Mays and his Confederates, actually the uh, first Cherokee regiment, uh, that's where he learned the guerrilla tactics and of swift and brutal attacks. Did you know that there was uh, Cherokee Confederate units? No, I did not. Especially out of Texas. I did not. Yeah, that's something that's uh, very unwell known. A year later, he returned home to build his own unit, which will be known as Quantrill's Raiders. His unit was comprised of men like William Bloody Bill Anderson, Cole Younger, as well as Frank and Jesse James. That's correct. And I think you said you had some family that uh, rode with them too, didn't you? My, uh, my great-grandmother was uh, Rhoda Jane Pence, who was a cousin of Bud and Donnie Pence. And that's one reason that Quantrill's Raiders finally wound up here in, in uh, Wakefield, because they knew that they had uh, people who were Southern sympathizers here. Wow, wow, that's pretty interesting. 
So I guess you could say that your ancestors were Confederate? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, nothing wrong with that. So. <laughs> yeah, and Quantrill's raiders terrorized all over Kansas, Missouri, and Texas, where they raided supplies and engaged with Union troops. They looted and burnt cities, terrorized citizens, and they killed many people. And I think you were telling me a story about Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas, in August the 31st of 1863, uh, they raided Lawrence, Kansas and killed 150 men and boys. They didn't, they spared women, but uh, they took a toll of about 150 men and boys there. Wow, 150 men and the boys too, I and guess. And the boys too. Uh, it, there was reports that wives would lay down on top of their husbands pleading for their lives and they would just stick their Colt uh, 1851 six shooters under the women and shoot the husbands right under the women. Wow, these guys were some bad dudes, weren't they? they? Bloody Bill Anderson, they, they didn't call him Bloody Bill for nothing. You know, you know, and that's what's crazy about it is you and I were talking before the video about how so many people idolize these guys today, right? They still do. There are, there are actually um, clubs in Germany that are called Quantrill Clubs. Wow, Quantrill Club <laughs> in Germany, how about that? Yeah, he's definitely an infamous guy and somebody that's it's, uh, quite interesting, you know, the James Gang or people that uh, have that served with them too, so. Bloody Bill Anderson, I read one time, Bloody Bill Anderson, they captured 20 Union troops somewhere at a train station, lined them up on the ground and went down and shot everyone and killed every one of them. Wow. But they were just, they were just bloody people. I mean, you know, war, you know, I mean, no, nothing's fair in love, except for love and war, right? Right? Well, how's that go? Well, Quantrill, <laughs> Quantrill, he bred fear and terror throughout the land. Yeah. And uh, so. I guess you could say the same thing for Sherman on yeah, the other side. Right. You know. You know, and like most all outfits of this type, the men began to fight amongst each other and split off into their own smaller groups. And by the end of 1864, Quantrill was left with only a few dozen men. Uh, in January of 1865, Quantrill moved into Spencer and Nelson County, Kentucky, and teamed up with Sue Mundy. Yeah, Sue Mundy, Marcellus Jerome Clark. What, was that a woman? I don't Sue know. Mundy? It, no, it was not. <laughs> it was not. That's a totally different story, isn't it? There, there is a house located on Greens Lane, which is uh, between my house and where Quantrill was shot that uh, Sue Mundy supposedly surrendered in 1865. How about that? It's occupied by Woody and Lower Cheek today. How about that? And then he was taken to Louisville and hung, wasn't he? That's correct. Yeah, Sue Mundy was a, uh, another character in itself and definitely another video. After several weeks of raiding into Spencer and Nelson County area on a rainy day on May the 10th, 1865, Quantrill and his men were at the farm of James Wakefield, just out of Wakefield, Kentucky. Quantrill was asleep in the hayloft, taking a, he was taking a nap. His men were down having a corn cob fight. Oh, a corn cob fight. And all of a sudden, one of the men shouted, here they come, and it was Ed Terrell out of Shelbyville with about 20 troops, and they rode down on them. And he, he was a bounty hunter, wasn't he? He was a bounty hunter, and they rode down on them and started firing their weapons at them, and Quantrill came down out of the loft. He had a fresh horse that wasn't used to firing, <laughs> and as he tried to get up on the horse, the horse bolted, and so then two other riders took off down the ridge near a draw. One of them was Dick Glasscock, and as Trump Quantrill was trying to get up on the back of his horse, uh, Glasscock was shot and killed. And then wow. Clark Hawkinsmith came up and, and Quantrill tried to get up on the back of his horse. And that's when Clark Hawkinsmith was shot and killed and uh, uh, Quantrill was wounded in the back. Yeah. I have here a sharp 50 caliber bullet and this type of bullet is what is reportedly uh, caused Quantrill to be paralyzed by being shot in the spine. Wow. Now. They shot him in the back, didn't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. in the spine, mm -hmm. in the spine. So I guess that uh, when a couple of the men ran out of there, they, they kind of hid, didn't they? There was, a, there was a pond that has since been bulldozed in, but there was a pond there with cattails in it. And some of the men 
got in the cattails and actually laid in there with just their noses sticking out and stayed there until the the, the people were gone. And uh, wow. uh, but that's how some of those uh, raiders got away that day. I uh, about 30 or 35 years ago, I was asked, uh, invited by Tom Watson, who wrote Silent Riders, and another gentleman from the Filson Club in Louisville, Kentucky, to go out and investigate the site uh, and take a look at it. And we looked at the pond and we looked at uh, the location. The barn was gone, but we pretty much knew where that barn was. And then we noticed, we looked at the hollow that. Uh, Quantrill and the other guys went down trying to make their escape. And it was reported that uh, when Quantrill was shot, he was shot by a huge sugar maple tree. And uh, they, they pulled him over to the tree and set him up against it, uh, waiting to carry him back to the house. So the gentleman from the Filson Club had a metal detector with him and uh, he ran it up alongside the tree and there uh, was a uh, beep and it, he extracted a 36 caliber uh, pistol ball. Wow. And so we're pretty sure that that was the tree that uh, Quantrill, the stump was there. It was about eight to 10 feet high still. And uh, I'm gonna go back in the spring and, and try to see if there's any remnants of that stump. But we found a pro within a few feet of where Quantum was shot. Yeah, and that's right here. You know, we just can't identify that right now at this point in time. Right. Where the barn's gone and things like that. Right. But we know it's right, right here, so. They, uh, they took uh, Quantrill that evening to the home of James Wakefield, which was just right there. And uh, that evening, Frank James came over from Samuel's Depot in Nelson County to visit with him. And uh, he remained there, I think, another day, and then they uh, got a horse and wagon and loaded it with straw and took him to Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. Dick Glasscock is buried uh, five miles south of there at Bloomfield, Kentucky in the Bloomfield uh, Maple Grove Cemetery. And Clark Hawkinsmith is buried just adjacent to that in what they call Old Bloomfield Cemetery, and those graves can be visited today and found. Wow, yeah, let's check that out. Yeah. So they took him to Louisville, and he went to the prison hospital, and what happened then? Well, about, about three weeks later, uh, he, he died. Right. And one of the things that's pretty interesting is he has three graves. That's correct. W what's the story with that? Yes, he has three graves and uh, he was buried in Louisville. And then later, uh, a good friend of his came down to investigate what happened, came out to Wakefield, and then his mother came down to investigate it and asked his friend if he would exhume Quantrill's bones and take them to Dover, Ohio. So, so, so he's buried there too? He's buried there too, but not in entirety because the friend kept some bones and some hair and sold them sold his bones and hair. Sold his bones and hair because he was very famous. Yeah. And still is very famous. Absolutely. And, and so he actually wound up with three different graves. And then in 1990, the Missouri Sons of Confederate Veterans rounded up three bones, I think three leg bones and two arm bones and some hair. And buried those in Missouri. Wow. So. He's got three graves. Right. How about that? I know Daniel Boone has two. I don't know anybody else that's got three. <laughs> Neither do I. So Quantrill has three graves. One in Louisville. One in Dover, Ohio. And one in Higginsville, Missouri. And nobody knows for sure which one he's in and maybe he's in all three. That's possible. That's possible. No one knows. But one thing is for sure. Right near here is where he met his defeat and his eventual demise. Mr. Downs, is there anything else you'd like to add to the story? I, I don't think there's anything. It was just, uh, it was, he was just a famous person, a famous raider, and, and Spencer County is where he met his end, actually, so. And that's pretty neat because, uh, you know, Spencer County has so much history, you know, and things that uh, many people don't know about. But this is a guy that, like you said earlier, is world famous. And right here is where they, cut, they, they shot him and captured him. This, uh, this area was settled early on. Uh, we're right on the Salt River here. And uh, my, my ancestors had a cooper 
cooperage on our farm and they could put uh, a flat boat in when the water was up and go down the Salt River. And if you went down the Salt River, you didn't have to negotiate the falls of the oh, Ohio yeah. like you did if you came down the Licking or the Kentucky River. How neat, yeah. And so uh, Jacob Yoder wasn't probably here by accident. Absolutely, yeah, makes sense. He came here for a reason, didn't yeah. he? What's a cooperage? I know what it is, but for our folks here, what's a cooperage? It's uh, making barrels. My uh, third grade uh, uh, grandfather came in from Surrey County, Virginia, and on our where our present farm is located, established a cooperage in 1791. Wow, your family's lived on that land since the late 1700s. Well, 1791. That's amazing. I, I have the the deed hanging on our wall that yeah. is uh, it's actually. Uh, before Kentucky was a state, sure. and uh, it says uh, District of Kentucky, State of Virginia. Really cool. What a treasure that is yeah. for sure. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So here we are near the location of the capture and mortally wounded of Captain William Quantrill, the leader of the ruthless Confederate guerrillas, Quantrill's Raiders. And we're proud to bring you that story. Mr. Downs, Thanks so much for bringing us here. You're welcome. It was enjoyable. Yes, sir. Thank I you. appreciate it. And remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. <laughs>